This is Commodore 64 that I got about a year ago and I've, there's plenty of videos I've done on my channel about this one and I've fixed it up, it's had all kinds of new stuff in it and it's been sitting on my shelf for a while uh, but watch this when I turn it on. It's completely broken. Now I am pretty sure, I'm like 99% sure that I know what this is because it happened in the video when I was repairing it originally and I'll show you what's in here. Uh, there's my little post-it note to say what I did with it. So it was the 5th 21 and spacebar dodgy stuff like that. It's got a really knackered case. Um, it's got one of these Gel PLAs in that I bought from eBay back then. And I remember in the video when I got it, I, I was having loads of trouble and it turned out it was this Gal PLA that was causing the problem. So what I did was I reprogrammed the chips and then suddenly it started working again. But now it's been sitting on my shelf for like a year or something it's just broken itself again. So I thought it'd be interesting to take these out and try and read them back and see what's on them to see if we can just find out what's gone bad in these GAL PLAs. Because clearly maybe one or both of these GALs has actually gone bad and just doesn't do what it's supposed to do anymore. So that'd be interesting to find out which one's gone bad, if not both of them. And uh, I've also got some replacements, so I can program a replacement and put it in. Like I said, I'm 99% I'm sure that this thing is actually the problem. But yeah, just to show you that it, it's repeatable, it just does that every single time. You can see it's not even got the correct amount of RAM and everything like that. It just gets worse and worse as time goes on. It's really bad. So hooked up to the computer, I've got this uh, TL8662 Plus Universal Programmer, and I'm gonna pull one of the chips out of there Put it in this, and then we'll we'll read it back, and we'll see. At least I think I can read it back. I don't know. I haven't tried this before, so I haven't rewatched my video. I don't know if it was the left chip or the right chip. I might have reprogrammed both of them, but let me see if I can. Let's pull that out. There we go. So we'll pull the left chip, and I will insert it into there. This is actually a gal. It's a 20V8A, and it says to use B uh, for the project that this Gal PLA is for. It says to use B, not A. I don't know if there's any difference, but there it is. So let's read the left one out first. This is the website here about the Gal PLA. It's quite a, quite a neat little project. So I've got selected the Gal 20V8A, which is what that chip is. And can I read this in? So I'm going to hit read on there and let's see if I can read this left gal back in. Can I save that now? So I hit save on that. And these are the originals here. So I'm going to put those, I'll put them in the folder with that. So I've saved out the left. So this one here is the original one that came from this project on the website. And that's the one I just read out there. They're actually a different size. So that's pretty odd. Let's just do a diff on them. And so this head is different. Hmm, this diff program is saying that these lines have changed. Hmm, I don't know. It's different, but I don't know why it's different. Most of this program here looks the same, except it clearly it's deleted whatever this header thing is. But this stuff's all the same down here, and then we get something different going on at the end. Let me pull the right one, and let's see if we get anything different with that one. So again, we've got a different header and it, apart from these line breaks afterwards, which it's saying are different, it then just ends up with this different number at the end. Is that like a checksum or something? So it doesn't appear to be super broken. So I suppose what I should do, assume because I am assuming this is the problem now because I've, like I said, I've seen this kind of corruption before. Let's take both of these gals away. And let's program some new ones. So these are some I just got from some seller on eBay, which sent them in these, like these little ESD foam. Uh, but then this plastic bag doesn't look very ESD safe. 
So maybe that was a complete fail. It was wrapped in like a giant plastic bubble wrap as well. These are Argal 20 V8Bs, which is what it recommends to use on the actual project. So I don't know if the A is any different, but um, clearly there's something odd going on there. So let's stick one of these in and let's program that. So I'll program as the, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll program as the left one and I'll stick this other right one back in and we'll see if we get any kind of change. So I'll change this to the Gal 20 VB. I don't know if that makes any difference. Um, we need to load file. I'll go load this left one. This is the one from the original project. I'll load that in and we raised before. There's an encrypt chip there. I don't think I want encrypt. I don't think I want that. And I think I just hit program. Program range, I don't know if I'm supposed to hit lock bit or not. Let's try that. Programming error. Is it that I don't want? Oh yeah, lock bit, I wouldn't take lock bit. Programming fuse bits completed. Verify completed, programming successful. That is apparently programmed. Let's, so that's programmed as the left. Let's put that one in. I'm trying to make sure I don't get any pins in the wrong way. Yeah, so I've got one of these chip leg straighteners. Stick that in. I think it's just the legs are a little bit too wide. Come on, get in there. Doesn't want to go in. Might bend those a little bit too much. So that's the left one in. Let me put the right one back. And let's see what we get. Right. So I've programmed a new left chip and same old right chip in there. Now let's see what we get. It's going to be a black screen. Oh, that's completely fixed it. So that that left chip was dodgy, but the right one's okay for some reason. So that is odd. So there's something faulty about this chip. And this is what it did before, like back in the day. I, I, like I said, I, I could recognize what was happening on the screen for this being like the dodgy PLA. But yeah, it goes to show that, I mean, I know these aren't in production anymore and these are old chips, but uh, it's funny how we've got like C64 PLAs that are actually, you know, failing. But then I'm actually putting like a more modern replacement in and that's failing as well. So there's definitely something wrong with this. It it looked like the programming in there, it looked like the checksum was different at the end. But apart from that, the programming looks the same out of this thing. But clearly it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing, as far as I could tell. So let's just put the test cartridge in this and let's see that it runs through okay. Because this was all mega corrupted before. So yeah, I, I, these have been, re I think one of these was reprogrammed by me, but this came from some eBay seller as part of the PLA that I bought the whole thing. So that's working. The bad stuff is just stuff that's not, uh, the test harness isn't plugged in, so. Um, it's coming up as corrupt, but other than that, yeah, it looks like this left gal chip is dodgy. I just guessed at the left one. I didn't. I didn't know it was going to be that, um, but the right one seems to be okay. So let's just boot a game up and make sure that this works. But yeah, this is something to watch out for. These that's that's just got some really weird failure mode that it comes up with all that corrupted garbage. Is something like the timing's gone off in this or something like that? But let's draw the. Um, Let's do what Adrian's digital basement does. Let's draw the obligatory. It's got a tick on it to say it's good, but we are putting a cross on that one because that is a bad chip. Can't believe the modern replacement for the PLA has gone bad. I think I'm actually gonna load Rainbow Islands off cassette. I'm sure that a while back I was trying to use this computer. Um, I was like using it at lunchtime when I was working from home. I was just loading a game at lunchtime. I tried to load this game, Rainbow Islands, and I'm pretty sure 
that it didn't work. But I did a live stream the other day and I loaded this on a different Commodore 64 and it did work. So there's definitely something odd going on there. So yeah, I'm gonna load from tape and see what we get. Well, it started. So yeah, I, when I used to load it off tape, it would um, it would start loading, it gets the ocean loader part and it would show the logo, but the game would never actually load. Well, I'm pretty sure this does now actually work. Well, I know the tape does because I loaded it on a live stream. So yeah, fast, crazy action, furious fun, stunning graphics. Rainbow Islands. How cool is this? Hopefully this will work. Oh, so this like budget version must have come out later than 89. Joystick only. Oh. Oh no. That's not working. I just turned the sound up. I wasn't listening to the sound. You could probably hear it, but I wasn't listening to it. That has not worked. I wonder if this, I wonder if there still is a problem with this Commodore 64 because I know for a fact this tape works and on that tape drive it works too. That's really odd. There's probably another problem with this Commodore 64. I don't know. I'm going to reprogram the right GAL PLA as well. I know this tape works and I know it works on this tape drive. I've seen it work and on a different Commodore 64. So I'm suspecting that right, maybe something's wrong with that right PLA as well. I mean, it's passing all its tests, but I'll tell you what, I've got, I've got another chip. So why don't I just program the right one as well? And let's just put, let's put a replacement in for that. Just to be sure, let's rule out that there's nothing wrong with this. So let's program a new one because it'll only take a few minutes to do this. And yeah, let's program that. Oh, that one didn't program. Why not? What was wrong with that? Is this the, is this the wrong chip? Program. What, now you're working? Programming successful. Cool. So this is a bit of a long shot, but I don't know. It's worth a try. And at least I've got two kind of identical chips here as well. I need to bend these legs in a bit. Right. So we programmed a right chip as well. Let's just check that that still works. Right, we're still booting. Um, let's just give it a quick test. Nothing's really changed. Okay, so it's exactly the same as before, except I've replaced that right gal as well. Only thing left to try then is, let's just try loading this tape again, because like I said, I know this tape works. And I know it works on this cassette player. So here we go again. Well, the music sounds right so far, I think. Or is there some of it missing? I oh, know. No, that's right. Oh, so it didn't get this far before. It just crashed out. So I wonder if this one's bad too. Uh, this right one. Even though this computer was booting properly, maybe it just wasn't causing enough trouble to make something noticeable on the screen. But is this because there are these A's? I'd have to look at what the difference with this A and B is. I mean, there might not be nothing wrong with them. Maybe they're just not tolerant enough to be used in this in this particular Gal PLA. But that is interesting. If these have got some kind of weirdo failure mode. Oh, I don't think it's worked though. It has failed that. Well, that's a shame. I still don't trust this chip though because it got further than it did before. Yeah, I think, that isn't, I think that's supposed to have loaded by now. So, I mean, it could be that this C64 has got other problems, but I think this Gal PLA is definitely a problem.
So there it is. This this C64 definitely works, but just the maybe the, there's something wrong with the cassette circuitry. I'm not sure. But I'm going to mark both of these gals as bad just in case. And again, these are the A versions. I don't know if they're suitable to be used in this gal PLA because it says you use the B version. So I'd still have to look that up. But there they are in case you want to look them up um, to see if they are actually work for you. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to mark them both as bad. I don't trust them. They've failed me before, so they'll, they'll probably fail again. So that's it, that's just a quick little look at these GAL PLAs and how that these GALs can actually fail or maybe not be compatible. So uh, yeah, hope you found that interesting.